It takes courage to hope for something because you have to be willing to not get what you hope for. And then to be able to get back up and hope again and keep trying for something else, another dream. There's all kinds of way that we cope with the fear of failure, we cope with failure, that in the end just keeps us from living and dreaming and hoping and trying and throwing ourselves at things. Who are we? Gotta believe in that. Get on that football field. You're already dead if you don't hope. You're already dying if you just sort of live this even keel, like I'm not gonna set any goals. That's already dying in my book, and that's what's happening in our community. Our young men are already dying. Um, they're just prolonging it. In the City is a nonprofit run by residents of this community to organize our community to create some change. I'm not the leader, I'm the football coach. Our fearless leader is Lucy Robles. She spends her days connecting with neighbors, pulling them together to basically find solutions. Eso es lo que es. En sí, en cierta manera, mi trabajo es ese, tener relaciones y hacer o tratar de que usted tenga mejor relación con la señora, de que usted tenga mejor relación con, con esta señora y de que se haga un, un grupo grande you know, para apoyo para nuestros propios hijos. No es para beneficio mío, es para beneficio de los chicos. Always bear in mind that your own resolution to succeed is more important than any other. Your own resolution to succeed is more important than any other. Our high school was being considered to just be dismissed from the school district because it had such poor academic performance. There's 50% dropout rate. Robert. The expectation that uh, the boys were given for their academic performance was just too low. Oh, John Ho. <laughs> The only signals that they were being given was just get a 2.0 GPA because that's what is needed to be able to play football. This is where we created Mission 3.0. What we're going to teach you right now is a part of the tradition of Lincoln football. Clearly for our football players, their passion in life was football. It was sort of the one thing that they got them out of bed every day. Their passion in life was clearly not their academics. The premise was how could we create a program that would use their passion of football to then try to help change their attitude about academics. I knew that I was dealing with a population at our high school that just did not do well in school and so they I was afraid of like a mutiny. That was like my worst fear, you know, that these kids would be like, we're not doing this and we're going to get protests and all we need is a 2.0, you know, kind of a stuff. When I first presented to the team at the beginning of the summer, they were so fired up. When Coach Chris first told us about the 3.0, I was a bit surprised. Like, I'm not the smartest kid. I was like, damn, a 3.0. But like later on, when when the co when the team started becoming a family and we started getting determined, how I started to get determined, how I, I really want to get that 3.0 now. So right now, what you're gonna do is I'll pass out these cards, and right now you're gonna write down your own personal goals. Academic, your personal goals. Academic, football, and family. Okay. 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 Okay felt kind of alone in their academics. Like they just felt isolated, that they didn't really have anybody at home that could help them. It wasn't something they did with their friends and it was just sort of an area of their life that they always failed at. And I think the thought that I was and our coaching staff and the school and the community was gonna give them support so that they could have good grades, they were really excited about it. had an opening year banquet uh, with all of the parents that was fantastic. Uh, 150 people from the community were there. But in 10, 15 years, what I want from the bottom of my heart is I want them to have graduated from college, gotten a good job, and I want them to buy their mothers a home as a symbol of their success. Oh, yeah. If everybody can see here, we have three goals, and these boys 
coming up with these three goals. Our first goal is that we want to be a family. We want to love each other, respect each other, and die for each other on the football field. Our second goal is that every person, every boy on this football team, by the end of this semester will have a 3.0 GPA, which is what you need to qualify for college. And the last goal is that we are going to be the Notre Dame champs in G football. Uh, we're going to win the championship this year. We had a contract signing ceremony. And in the contracts, the parent and, the, and their son agreed to commit to three days of tutoring together as a football team after practice. So even the few kids that were doing really well in school, they still committed to stay. We also had them commit to weekly progress reports. They got from their teacher not only their current grade, but also comments on what it was that they could do to improve their grade. And then finally, uh, if their academic performance wasn't very good, then football playing time would be decreased. I think it's cool because like, not that many f people like on the football team do good in school and stuff like that. And with Mission 3.0, they got a motivation. And they, like, with all the tutors and everything, they get more help. I think it's a good idea because, you know, people, like, they have to have, a, like, a backup because not everybody's going to be, like, a crazy superstar, football player, MVP and stuff like that. So with school, if they get a 3.0, they could get in a lot of colleges and they could be a real successful in life. Me and my friend Eduardo, which, who is on the team now, we both planned it on since middle school that we were going to play high school football. Cesar Vargas, that guy, he makes me laugh as much as anybody on my team. You know, he has, he has this unique grin where he just sort of grins with kind of half his mouth. He just kind of walks up to you, hey coach, for the practice, how you doing? I want to hit somebody today, coach. You're like, that's great, Caesar. Knowing that he's going to get his butt kicked because he's like 80 pounds, you know. Down, set, go. Hey, running backs, get some water. Right, who's the captain? Captains, I got three cap. You want to see him right now? Joaquin. Uh, right from the get-go, he was a leader. The kids elected him captain. No, I just need to make sure it was you. Sorry from the back. Any question? He was one of just our best football players, uh, one of our best skill players, my best running back, best guy with the football, had really great hands, could catch. He was kind of one of the few guys uh, on JV that we just wanted to get the football to a lot. I'm a lineman, and I'm like the smallest lineman. Fernando is a great guy. We were trying to instill in our offensive line that when they break the huddle, they're just to run quickly to the line as a way to tell themselves and their opponents that they're ready to play football, not sort of a jog to the line. All right, I want to run the same thing though. Okay, wide left. He would get the play and he would sprint to the ball. He would get over that ball and he would be ready to go. I mean, literally all game long, he's sprinting. First in to Tiger. Robert, he was definitely our hot and cold player. One play, he would just be running people over. I mean, just unstoppable running back. But then there were plays that he would just sort of fall asleep and just not know what he was doing. And you'd pull him out and you'd ask him, what's going on? And he wouldn't really know what's going on. He's uh, definitely the team clown. I mean, you turn around and he's making everybody laugh somehow, some way. <laughs> I've had about seven or eight of you come and tell me that they're cheap shotting you, they're hitting you in the face, they're grabbing your face mask. We've told the refs that's all we can do. Guess what? It's football. They are, they are, they believe that they can overpower us. That is an issue of your heart. Football is a lesson of life. We emphasize all year long that becoming men means giving everything we have and never ever quitting, especially when the challenges are the greatest. Hey, good job. Good game. Then try and connect that with their grades because we knew that the challenges that they were getting in the classroom were some of their toughest challenges in life because they, they just weren't the best students. So now number two, John. So far, what's challenging is just uh, me being lazy. Most of the time, me forgetting my work and all that. Like uh, like teachers say, just do your work, do your things, and uh, 
you get an A. But like, I kind of slack off sometimes, fall asleep, and then forget I have to do homework. Uh, I usually hang out with the tables over there with Adrian. He's number 55. The JV table is usually over there. There's a lot of like barriers and stuff that you have to overcome. And like with the way I live, you know, I try to kick with a lot of the homies and stuff. And I think it's harder like to be kicking. I don't really kick it with nobody no more. I'm mostly about football and stuff like that. And with 3.0, I don't know, like homework, that's pretty hard, you know, to, fin to go to practice, go kick it with your homies and everything, and then still finish all your homework. Since school started, I just mostly like just go to football practice, go home, do homework, then go to the next day. I don't kick it with most of my homies back then. But, uh, it's cool, you know. Well, I had a 3.0 before, but like, like my grades started going down. So now I'm like, you know, trying to work hard to get it again because it really felt good the first time. So getting it again is way better. So we just tried to infuse them of like, you have to embrace this challenge. You can't run away from it. You can't try to avoid it. You can't just let yourself down. You got to really go after it and give everything you have. They're big, coach. They're real big. My God, I got no more skill, guys. Come on, let's go. Hey, get them fired up. I'm tired of them pushing us around. Let's go. And we already have like three injuries. One kid's going to the hospital right now. Can't breathe. But can you can you handle it? When you get hit. Be tough. It'd be tough for me. Hey, these guys are pushing us around. We need somebody to show some courage. Proud of our kids, they didn't quit. Okay, the reason why we lost this game is because you guys came out scared and you guys let yourself get pushed around a little bit. Uh, the reason why we uh, only lost 13 6, the good news is, is you guys decided to man up, you guys decided to fight, and you guys had a great second half. Saturday, we went to Occidental College, then learned a little bit about their life how it is to be, go to college. Occidental is not gonna be for all of you, but I want you to be thinking about college and what college life is like. I played running back, uh, some a little bit of receiver, uh, safety and corner. But uh, I knew that if I could get my academics up and if I could do sports and do them well, um, then I could get a scholarship and I got that scholarship. I don't pay a dime to be here. For all your food, pays for your, pays for your housing, pays for your books.
Look, there's a picture of my great great grandfather. I'm part of one. Well, at the beginning, I was kind of tired. I kind of slept late, and then like once we started like walking around the dorm rooms, it was like, you know, it's a pretty good college to come. I want, either want to go to USC or uh, Oxy, because those are like my two favorite schools now. The success that we're having with our football boys rests on Lucy's work with the parents. Nos gustaría saber. ¿Cuáles son los cambios que ustedes han visto entre, con sus hijos, ya sean positivos o negativos, um, desde que empezó el programa de Misión 3.0, desde que empezó la temporada de fútbol? Sus grados, excelentes. No. Jamás me había dado tan buenos no. grados como ahora. Ya implementaron el 3.0. Es donde yo he notado que mamá hizo mi home at home. Y el año pasado no lo no, podía yo hacer. No le interesaba. No no entregaba tareas, so sus hábitos de puros eh, Ds, mejorado. Sí. sí, bastante. Me tenían muchos Ds, unas Cs, y aún así los dejaban jugar. Yo quiero darles primeramente las gracias por este programa que pusieron, porque mi campeón va para arriba. <risa> Otra cosa que me estaba diciendo, le llevé el sábado, el sábado le llevé la cola, ah, y le íbamos platicando, y eres muy callado, no hay plática y plática. Y me dice, ¿sabes que soy capitán del equipo? Sí, mi hijo ya sabía. Le digo, ¿pero la escuela? Yo siempre digo la escuela. Sí, sí, yo pienso, ¿vas a ir a esta escuela? Y dice, no, voy a ir a la universidad. Nunca me decía nada. Ahora sí se fue expresando. Y es el papá, en vez de su mero papá del más chiquito, él es su papá del chiquillo. Y le dice, Alejandro, la tarea. Ay, no, es que, órale, te toma el tiempo, lo pone a leer. ¿Y eso ha cambiado leer? así o, uh, o sí, ha, no, sido, ha cambiado? Ah, porque antes estaban, uh -huh, quítate estaba, la almohada, okay, estira la, so. eh, ha cambiado mucho mi hijo con su hermanito porque lo ayuda mucho. Y también ha cambiado mucho en que ya se comunica con nosotros, porque antes casi no, nomás llegaba de la escuela, aventaba la mochila y a ver tele a meterse en la computadora. Y antes no nos platicaba nada y ahora llega, papá, ¿qué crees? Que mira y que le pone los juegos y agarra a mi esposo. Mi esposo está, te... no, fácil, te quebro, papi, ¿qué es <risa> Y, y mi esposo mío, dice, mío. estoy muy contento contigo, hijo, porque yo veo que este juego y este año te están ayudando mucho más que el año pasado. Porque los ayuda mucho hasta ellos mismos empujarse un poquito más para ser mejor. So, um, a mí, yo miro todos los niños ¿verdad? como juegan y yo digo, wow. Y en veces que, como cuando vinimos, que yo estaba mirando de ahí, como ellos están enfocados en su tutoring y yo digo, like, wow, eso está bien, porque otros niños se fastidian, se aburren y mejor tratan de no hacerlo. Tienen que saber que nosotros estamos aquí para ayudarlos. Tienen que saber que nosotros estamos aquí para, para apoyarlos, aunque no sean realmente nuestros hijos, pero por el hecho de que están compartiendo, you know, de que se cuidan en el campo, de que son hermanos a la hora de la guerra en el campo, you know, también tienen otros papás que son parte de ese sistema y que you know, no solamente los entrenadores, no solamente los uh, You know, la gente de la escuela, sino que también nosotros los padres también estamos dentro de eso. Yeah, you're doing the swing. Chance, you're doing the swing. That's what we changed. Oh, uh, right now the coach is having me play many positions. Hey, see, that was on you. And then we get seven more yards if you keep your block. Right. Um, he wants me to learn the place for almost all the positions on offense. Well, I probably used him at like four different positions all year long. I think he knew the offense better than I did. Kevin's coming slant. You're going hard, and then you're coming back. Yeah. All right, good. Let's go. Ah, ah. Come on, come on. Oh, coach. Right here. He's got your quarterback blown up. Uh, bunch left. 
uh, uh, which is gun, bunch of gun, white, double slant. I'm a lineman, and I'm like the smallest lineman. Pretty scary because you have bigger guys coming in at you. And and all the linemen are like 200 pounds and above mostly. And I'm like barely like 165, 168. So I just try to stay low, like coach tells us, try and drive my feet. And I don't punk out when a guy comes at me. Um, I get pancaked a lot. I get dropped by bigger guys, but then that just makes me want to drop them back, so. Hey, two minute offense, that was fantastic. Give me six claps. Erwin, the refrigerator, Alessio. One of the biggest emphasis that we put on our football team is goal line defense. Most teams, when they find themselves backed up against the goal line and have to play goal line defense, there's sort of a psychological and emotional letdown. You play hard, but don't play as hard, and it's easier for them to score. Whereas what we try to teach our kids is actually when we get backed up against the goal line, that's when we have to fight the hardest. But we just make practice a lot more intense, and we really just emphasize it's sort of a test of character. It's a test of perseverance. It's a test of of desire. Because they have tried enough and failed, they then just choose to not fully engage their heart. Then when things go wrong, it won't affect them, it won't hurt them very much. I'm just going to sort of not give everything I have. I'm just going to sort of be able to tell myself subconsciously, I just kind of let them score. And we, I talk about it all the time, live with your heart, live with your emotions, give yourself, don't be afraid of failing. Hey, Irwin just won the game for us, we got to carry him on Uh, well, this Friday we're going against Franklin. They're the champions from last year. So right now what's in my head is like if we beat them, then we have the championship. Our kids were ready. They believed uh, they were going to give their best effort. We didn't toss it to Gilbert. Down, we lost the football. We lost uh, 16 to 14. We were heartbroken because we knew in our league that, man, if you lose, you're almost out of it. But then we realized, okay, if we just can win the next four, then we could really have a shot because the year previous, three teams had gone four and one and there was a three-way tie. And we thought, yeah, definitely in our league, Anybody can beat anybody this year, so this team that we just lost to, they'll, they'll lose one time. So the second week, we went in and played Eagle Rock, who I had told my coaches and my team that that was going to be the team <clears throat> that was going to be the best team in the league, that we had to beat those guys if we wanted to win the league championship. Come on, line. 86, run a post pattern, you run the wheel.
Okay, what we just need is we need my motion guys, Caesar or Kevin, I need you to get here faster. We need a cup block right here. All right, Gilbert, run this way. Pop the post or pop the wheel. Who's getting the end? From now Robert, Robert, you're, Robert, you're getting get the end. Then option pass, you're getting that end. Stay on, on, on every option pass? If we go option pass, you got to get the end. If we go option lead option, you just clip the end. Okay, if we go lead option pass, you got to get that end for me. <laughs> Come on, defense, let's go. Defense, come on, defense. Yeah, you gotta protect that football, okay, especially when they start to wrap up, put two hands over it. Two hands over when they start attacking. Right here. Wait, what are you, uh, are you done? Uh, you done? Just yes, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go back to that. Yeah. No, 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 you come around. Go around the line, up the sidelines. Okay? Not white. White blocking, all right? Let's score right here. Well, their coach just told me what I was going to tell you guys, right? If we don't turn the ball over, it's a different ball game. All right? I think we had seven turnovers today. And you can't win a football game when you turn the ball over seven times. But guys, yeah, we just keep beating ourselves, right? Well, our defense is stopping, 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 and then they get an 80-yard run because we break down. Our offense has a 40-yard run, and then we turn the ball over. Our special team's doing great, then we turn the ball over. Okay, champions, now we, we learn from our mistakes and we look forward and that's just what we got to do. It was the only game where after, when I gathered the players together, I did not know what to say. Oh yeah, if you have your bag on the sideline, just go and get it. Yeah. Tigers on three, Tigers on three! One, two, three, Tigers! It was the most emotional game that we had the whole year because it was a roller coaster. This is exactly what happens to my players in their lives. Their lives are nothing but emotional roller coasters. There's this moment of good things happening. They're communicating with their mom. They're communicating with their father. And then bam, things blow up at home and abuse happens again. Or their mom starts to be able to bring home some money. And then bam, now all of a sudden they're scraping by for a couple months again because she lost work again. They start to do well in the classroom and then bam, they get the bad grade on the test. I think sometimes that's what they feel in life and what we feel in life is that it's just, it just doesn't stop. I'm surrounded by fumbles, I'm surrounded by chaos, I'm surrounded by failure. And it feels like to them that life is nothing but just like getting punched in the gut every once in a while. And it's sort of a cruel game. And you just have to make a choice uh, you know what, life is going to be like that. It's going to be cruel, especially in our community when you're growing up in very tough circumstances. And you either just not play the game, you know, we could, after that game, we could all just pack it in and just forfeit the rest of the game, say we don't want to deal with that cruelty and all those fumbles and the heartbreak anymore. Or you just go, no, I'm going to 
face that challenge and face that possibility, and I'm going to try harder and, and be better at life. Being 0-2, we knew that we were done in terms of trying to win a league championship. All of us really had to, to kind of make a decision if we were going to really be motivated to finish this season well, you know, and keep going strong. We're in a place that we didn't think we'd be in, but isn't this exactly what life is about? It's the same kind of place they find themselves in when it comes to their classwork. They never really feel like they're in first place, you know, in the classroom. They never really feel like they have momentum. They're always feeling like they try and they get defeated. Probably put it down in the notes somewhere. Is that it? Where? Paper chromatography is a use of technique for separating. My smarter classes like uh, like AP Bio and English. Like English doesn't make sense to me. And uh, AP Bio doesn't make one bit of sense to me. And where it's coming from. So if we start here, the electrons are already here. It gets moved on and then hydrogens are pumped into the lumen. Is to absorb the wavelengths that chlorophyll can. Okay, so if you see here, if this is. You know, I try, like, a, I try my best. I'm studying, and I'm, I want to get that 3.0. Right, Summer steps and what you will do. The, the only reason I'll ever not get a 3.0 or anything higher is if I just, if, if I just quit, I just stop trying, and I say, you know what? I'm done. I just and I just walk away like a little baby. When do you have it? Huh? All right. Uh, couple. Couple of announcements. I had no idea how big the Goliath was that we were trying to slay, in trying to provide what was necessary for these boys to improve their academic performance. Are you sure? Yeah. How could you find out which type of way you learn better? I do remember at our 10 week grades, which is halfway through the semester, we had 14 kids over 3.0, which was more than double what we had last year. But we had 8 to 10 who were under 2.0. And then we had, you know, about 20 who were somewhere in between 2.0 and 3.0, but most of them around 2.5. The 10 week grades are official grades and they came out and I was just like, it just sort of finally hit me like, this is not going to be Disneyland, Hollywood movie ending experience. Nothing's going to prevent me from reaching the goal. I'm going to reach it. I'm going to, I'm going to get to there. I'm going to go over any obstacle, go over anything. It's like the only reason, the only way I could ever be prevented is someone like like tied me up to a chair and just say it stay there and fail and like no I'm gonna get up every day go to school do my work pay attention to class I'm not gonna give up <laughs> but with Robert you know as you learn about Robert you just realize the the life that he has has been so tragically difficult um, he has struggled more than most of the kids on our team and that's saying something um, he's had some just major, major stuff that has that he's had to deal with in his life from childhood. And you realize that the fact that he is on the football team, that he is working hard, um, is just a sign that the kid just refuses to give up in life. And I think that is the thing about Robert that I will, I will never forget is that he, uh, you know, he just will never give up. Even when he made a mistake, he just said, I want to get back in there and you give him the ball and he make a great run again. Right now, like, I should be doing good, but the coaches are telling me I have a 2.0 in less. Go! 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 He got hurt. So he hurt his foot. He tried to play. He just couldn't play anymore. But then after that week, um, uh, the, the grade check came out, he didn't make grades, and he couldn't finish the season with us. And that was really hard for me, it was hard for him, but I had been talking with him all year about his grades, and they weren't well, but he kept telling me he was going to get them up and everything was going to be fine, and it just didn't work out. I know he was really upset about that, and, and I was too. But we talked, and I know he's going to be back, and he's going to work even harder, um, because that's just how, who he is. He, he really believes that he can... Uh, do something with life and be something in life and 
has that kind of spirit of hope and that, that tenacity to work hard. And so, um, he's a good guy. Let's go. We're going to take our team prayer. Coach Caesar's going to lead us today, and we're going to get on it. When I was asked to talk about the Wilson game and the rivalry that we have with them, I thought there's no way I can do that justice. I got to bring in Coach Aguirre. I graduated from Lincoln in the 80s, and I did play varsity football. But in the 70s, the, the football team from Lincoln was, uh, went down in infamy, I would say. We um, lost the game at halftime 63 to nothing to Wilson because they're over the hill and so close. And we all recall that traumatic loss in the 70s. Uh, people really show up for that game. Not only the players, I think the whole community. Beating Wilson seems to happen once in a decade. The stands are packed, emotions are high. It's a rivalry of great significance for all of us at Lincoln. Game starts out horrible. We're getting our butts kicked. We still have five minutes left in the first quarter, and it's already 12 nothing. At this point, uh, Coach Ivan, who's a Lincoln grad, comes and rallies our troops, so we begin to play better football. This far. We find ourselves on the one yard line with two seconds left. We desperately need this score. About two seconds left in the half. Quarterback drops back to pass. George Barreto comes through in a clutch. Back of the end zone, falling out of bound. It's 12 7 going into halftime. We're down, but we got all the momentum. Gentlemen, this is our game. All that's left is for us to turn that switch on, and you know it's down there, don't you? I don't want any regrets. I don't want any of you tomorrow morning waking up going, I could have given more. Because right now, today, you are gonna give everything you have because that's just what you do. How many thousands of gassers have you run? How many thousands of sprints have you won? How many thousands of up-downs? This is the moment to play with everything you got. Second half starts, it is a battle. I see them hitting harder than I've seen all year long. Then on the punt, the uh, snapper was having a, a bit of a problem. So we asked them to go after that. You know, block a punt, uh, do whatever it takes, but we need the ball back. Oh. 
We're in the fourth quarter, four minutes to go. We have the ball, and all we need to do is just run down the clock, and our quarterback fumbles. One play later, they have first and goal, only nine yards to score and win the game. get it down to the two-yard line. With our backs to the goal line, at this point it's all down to can we make a stop. On the two-yard line, two plays to go, we need to make the stop. In that moment on the goal line, the boys had a choice to make. It was sort of lose the game and be able to say, well, I'm not going to cry about it. It just happens. I'm going to move on. Or, no, I'm going to give everything I have to stop them from scoring, knowing that if they do, I'm going to cry. But knowing that if they don't, I'm going to cry tears of joy. And that that's just so much more worth it. Hey, hey, now that is a bunch of great men that know how to win a great battle. That's what I'm talking about. All right, hey, what you need to know right now is that because you guys worked so hard for six months, because you guys ran all those hills and those gassers, because you fought, you just made an entire community have a memory that they're never going to forget. You made your parents proud. You made your school proud. You made your coaches proud. You need to always remember that when you fight and you never give up, good things happen. You gotta be assertive and you gotta like try to get your, you know what you're going for and you gotta try to get that. Knowing that it's your life, you gotta try harder, you gotta take advantage and go to school. Okay. And I really like the 3.0 idea because it's gonna make you like have a better advantage, like being a success. 
know, he's going to be a sophomore next year, and I really want him to play for me. I told him as the season ended, and I said, hey, Caesar, you get in that weight room because uh, you're going to be one of my main guys next year. And he looks at me with that little smile, and he goes, oh, I'm going to work real hard, coach, because I'm playing varsity next year. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, you know what? He probably will, even though he's 85 pounds. He is, uh, he's one of those guys, he's going to work hard, he's probably going to play varsity, so I'm going to really miss him on my team if I don't have him. The last thing I want is for us to fail, or for any of us to fail or feel like we're, 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 like we're, we're not that great, like to cut ourselves short. Like Coach said, in 20 years they want to find us somewhere having our jobs and our successful like business and whatnot. Like, I really want that for our team. Right, man, I'm so proud of you, son. I am so proud of you, all right? Everything we had talked about and we had tried to instill in them after the ups and downs of the seasons, losing those heartbreaker games, they came back and they won this game with a goal line stand. For that moment, they, they felt hope. They felt like they could be a success. If you play defense tonight, stand up. If you play defense tonight, yeah. I think what sunk in was when you do work hard, when you do sort of go after the challenges and don't give up, good things happen and it's worth it. Academic, football, and family.